Texas. Brother of Rahm Emanuel is the man behind the infamous death panels. He's been hired by the White House now. And uh, there are quotes in Salon by him saying medical care should be reserved for non-disabled participating members of society. And again, the yuppies already don't visit their parents or grandparents. Society's already falling apart. If you don't take care of your family, folks, nobody's going to take care of you. If you don't have the compulsion to take care of your family, you're not a human being. Something's wrong with you. You're screwed up. You're sick. It's not that you're some goody two-shoes. You're supposed to want to take care of people. It's very uh, demonic, dirty, sickening, greedy, mentally twisted to believe that, oh, if we give people health care, then that means we lose something. But see, once they create this big government model, everybody's competing with each other. And that fundamentally is the problem with any socialist model. Tarpley probably would argue, and I know this isn't socialism, because it doesn't exist. It always becomes elites sucking the trough dry. Uh, but, but regardless, fundamentally, we've all been turned into these... Well, I guess there was an article written, a short story by uh, the late, great uh, Kurt Vonnegut, who actually sent me some of his artwork one time and right before he died and said he appreciated my work. That's something I treasure at my house. But side issue of an of a world where everybody's got to be made equal. So tall people have their legs chopped off and smart people are given lobotomies. And uh, you know, this is the system. And these control freak eugenicists want to dumb down intelligent people to make us more manageable. But uh, there's no doubt these are sickos. And there's no doubt these death penalties are real. And he wrote for Atlantic Monthly. Which again... Is just sick, and he has these quotes about doctors shouldn't be so obsessed with the Hippocratic Oath. Tarpley, I want to go back to calls here in a moment. We're going to keep you to the end to cover uh, eugenics coming up at the bottom of the hour, part two on your analysis from last week. But I think the reason they're able to get away with some of this is it's so hard for people to come to grips with the mindset. So before we go back to calls, is it that these these bureaucrats, these control freaks, these oligarchs get off on denying people care? Is it that they di that they disdain having to eat at restaurants with the general public or stand in line with the public? I mean, why do they have such an instinct to kill and abuse and do wickedness? I, I don't understand it. Well, it's the mentality of oligarchy and elitism, and we have the historical examples going back as far as civilization, certainly to the Greeks and. And, and the Egyptian priesthoods, in many ways, represent an oligarchy. Uh, the modern group, of course, as we've seen with Holdren, they're Malthusians. They believe in zero growth, the limits of growth, that uh, the planet is overpopulated. They think that people pollute, that the average human being is a threat to nature or to their favorite hobby, be it the, the polar bear, the spotted owl, the snail daughter, or some other exotic uh, species, right, some kind of orchids that they may cultivate. Uh, the oligarch needs to view the mass of humanity as subhuman or somehow inferior. The problem of the oligarch is always to justify the irrational domination. And why should the oligarchy rule and not somebody else? Are the oligarchy more competent? Are they more intelligent? Are they more humane? No, they're none of these things. They're failures. Look at Larry Summers. He's a fool. He's a failure. He destroyed the Harvard University endowment with his economic Yeah, policy. I agree with you. I think it's fundamentally they're diseased and ugly and bent. Uh, generally, when I see these elitists, they're really physically horrifying and, 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 and very disgusting and spit dripping. And, I, <laughs> and, 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 and I've read some of their writings. They hate seeing a family with a good-looking husband and wife and happy kids. They hate flying over our swimming pools and houses and cars and barbecues. And they just, like the Wicked Witch... Uh, you, you, uh, and, uh, oh, you know, what's the fairy tale about Sleeping Beauty? Sleeping Beauty. They just want to come ruin the party. I would also, let's give a, a more concrete example, right? Rationing of care was the question before. Let's look at Michelle Obama. Now, uh, we've had this interesting uh, proposition. I write about it in my book. Uh, a man can hide what he believes, but the choice of women, especially the choice of a wife, often reveals a great deal about one's own character. 
So Obama has chosen Michelle Obama as his wife. Well, what was her business? She worked for the University of Chicago Hospital. She was in health care. Now, this is a very modern, state-of-the-art, world-class hospital that happens to be separated by just a few blocks from one of the worst inner-city ghettos where there are a lot of poor black people who don't have any health care. So the problem that the, the problem that, as they saw it, the University of Chicago saw, was that poor black people were coming out of the inner city ghetto and coming into the University of Chicago hospital emergency room and asking for treatment. So they needed to hire what amounts to a bouncer. They, in, they created a patient dumping scheme, and the head of the patient dumping scheme was Michelle Obama. And Just like good. Margaret Sanger said, we got to have blacks to kill these animals. Uh, we got to have a black to lead them to their death. And so she drives them over to the to the euthanasia or to the hospice or to the scum facility. And again, that's what she does. And, and you and they enjoy pimping. They enjoy hurting people. They enjoy scamming. They enjoy it. I mean, and you just see her eyes. She just, I mean, she just radiates evil and whoredom. No, I'm serious. But let's also add that in order to do this, Michelle hired David Axelrod to do a, a brainwashing campaign, essentially to dupe all the people. So the idea was that she was in charge of community relations. And community relations meant deploying a screen of bouncers to kick people out. But she had to smooth over the ruffled feelings of these poor people. One of their favorite methods was you'd go into the waiting room of the emergency room, and if you were black and you looked poor, they'd make you wait four or five hours. They'd simply ignore you and hope that you would walk out. So this is the mentality, and I think these, these examples... I think what's in the bill is important, but the mentality of the people carrying it out. How about ORSAG, right, the bean counter, the pointy-headed bureaucrat, the head of the uh, Office of Management and Budget? This person, who has no medical credentials whatsoever, is of the opinion that an MRI, a CAT scan, an ultrasound, an echocardiogram, an X-ray, this is too expensive. You yeah, don't these are the it. useless tests. I mean, I mean, the last 50 years, the most important devices they've got saved tens of millions of lives. A basic test, you don't get it. But we see more, more examples of this. Notice he promised everybody all this free stuff. As soon as he got in, the speech he won that night, he said, it's going to be austerity. It's going to be rough. It's going to be tough. He is... How do you, but I mean, exactly, how does he have half-brothers and brothers who are living in shacks on $1 a week? He won't help them. I mean, I help my family, that some of my family that doesn't have money. I mean, how would he not ever see his family? I mean, who is this Obama? You've studied his, his psychology. From watching him, he seems to really revel in, 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 in conning people and lying to them. He just, he's just a, 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 just a classic scam artist. I would call him a narcissist and a megalomaniac. Now, it's interesting because we did have this uh, interesting uh, book, A Bush on the Couch, by Dr. Justin Frank, I think, of, of uh, George Washington University, which correctly diagnosed Bush as a megalomaniac, somebody with delusions of grandeur. I think we have another case of megalomania, in this case with the left-wing ideology. Obama as a narcissist. Obama, who constantly refers to himself in his speeches, in the third person, he always says, as I've said repeatedly, or I've said consistently that, uh, this complete uh, uh, fascination with himself, he's now going to go to Martha's Vineyard to stay on a $30 million estate for the month of, uh, of August, cavorting with the rich oligarchs, the famous uh, New England uh, Boston Brahmins and, and, uh, and hedge fund operators from yeah, You couldn't Street. pay me to do that. I mean, that <laughs> Just nightmarish. All the, well, uh, the, the fried clams are good. Everyone, I don't know. Uh, yeah. The fried clams are good, and my my uncle used to live on Cape Cod, so I I, I got something in favor of this. But the the idea now, the narcissism, uh, he is obviously addicted to adulation. He expects adulation, and you can see that into his mentality now, a moment of irritability is creeping in. If you saw the summit with uh, with uh, Harper and uh, and. Uh, Calderon there, fake Cal. No, no, he's looking more and more angry. Now when somebody doesn't answer what he wants, he tries to dominate. He tries to cut in like Spectre did today. They just are like, I'm going to make you love me, and I'm going to make you love eugenics, you little piece of trash. I, I, would, I would say that we, 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 we're seeing the beginnings, perhaps, of the psychological disintegration of Obama. In other words, the, the idea that he might lash out in rage. We, we've had Geisner with a temper tantrum chewing the carpet on Friday. 
in a dispute with other regulators, fighting with Bernanke and Sheila Baer and the rest of them. Now, in, in that uh, press conference in Mexico, Obama did this thing where he said, you know, I'm somebody who always plays, you know, uh, a risky game. Or how did he say it? Uh, I, don't, I don't go with the probabilities. I, I you know, I, I shoot the works because... If I had to calculate my chances of being here, I never would have been here. So I'm the kind of guy that that's willing to, uh, you know, to do something that's that's not guaranteed of success. And it seemed to me that that he was somehow asserting himself, right? That I'm really this great guy who came out of nowhere and I did it all myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a maverick. When really the New World Order stork delivered him out of the bowels of hell on well, the White House front we, porch. We 